Okay, so I wanted to discuss a little bit more about the economics of this um, tower garden system that I'm building here. Um, so basically, according to Kira Slicer, which is a software using with the 3D printer, one of these units at the setting that I'm using, one of these modules here, takes 228 grams of plastic filament. So just round that up to 250. Um, then four of these levels, so one, two, three, um, four, would take one kilogram. So right now, if you figure out, oh, I have a fifth level and I have a base and I have these two pieces on top here, which split the water and act as a cap, um, it's probably still under two kilograms. So if one kilogram costs you, let's say, 15 US dollars, we're looking at about 30 US dollars. Now, I did decide to print my own net pots. If you buy these yourself, you can probably get them well less than a dollar each. If you're printing them, you're looking at probably 50 cents to a dollar worth of filament plus the time and electricity it takes you to print them. So my guess is that printing them is more expensive, but it also allows you to control the size. It allows you to have these nice units that lock in so they can't pull out easily. Um, and if you scale the model, they'll scale as well. So um, basically, you know, how much it costs you depends on your printing settings, depends on the material you're using depends on how many modules you use. So for example, this is five modules now. Um, I'm currently printing a six one and I have a seventh one standing by. So realistically, I can probably make it six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, and there's more space down at the bottom. So maybe 11 or 12 modules tall is what this is going to end up to. So in that case, might be looking at around 60 US dollars. Um, then I have to add a pump. Um, it, currently I'm just using an aquarium air pump. The way I've done that is to use a Venturi unit so that the aquarium pump simply pumps air, but the air gets pumped into this Venturi unit, um, which if you look at the design of it, you know, basically air goes into the short end and it gets sent out the long end, but simultaneously it does tend to suck up some of the water. So there's a slow drip of water. Um, if you can see this tube kind of shaking here, um, that's because drops of water are being pushed up it. So if you don't need a lot of water flow and the goal is just to keep the roots a little bit damp, this system can work. Um, if you want to have a large volume of water flow, like a lot of people recommend, then you'll probably need to buy a water pump at around $15. Um, the other thing is you need to have a bucket of some sort if you want to use this base system or some sort of container if you want to use the hanging version. Um, and you'll need a little bit of tubing. So if you're using a water pump, you probably want a thicker tubing than this. If you're using the air pump, this tubing is fine. But, you know, you should factor in maybe $15 for the pump, $5 for the bucket, and let's say, I don't know, $5 for the tubing. So all in all, you might be looking at something like $80, again, depending on your parameters. But nonetheless, if you look at the commercial units online and you see that they're like $300 at a minimum for a smaller tower than this, you know, the economics are certainly in favor of building your own. And that's before you factor in that, you know, if you have a 3D printer, you can build two of these, three of these, four of these, however many you want. Um, you know, with very little incremental cost. Again, it does depend on the filament you use. Um, probably the one thing that is sort of a detriment is that most of the white filaments, including, this is actually made from two different type of filaments, so um, most of the white filaments, including some that I have, you know, light can get through them. If light can get through them, then algae can grow on the inside of your unit. Now, a little bit of algae is not bad, but if there's huge amounts, it is bad. So for indoor use, uh, if your lights are not that bright, it might not be a problem. It hasn't been a problem for me, but I do plan on adding some brighter lights to this setup. Um, if you can see, there's actually no algae whatsoever in this unit currently. But again, if you get brighter lights, um, the plants may grow faster, but you may have more issues with um, algae. 
So the way to get around that is simply to use a darker plastic. You use black or dark green. Like if I had used this dark green color to build the entire unit, that would probably effectively block enough light to prevent algae from growing. And that is fine for indoor use. The problem that you'll find is if you use uh, black PLA for outdoor use, it will probably overheat and warp or shrivel or melt or something like that. So essentially what you want to do is you want to print your tower in black, a pet G or something like that, and then paint it white. Um, you could use something like Plasti Dip or whatever instead of regular paint, but um, that does add a little bit of time and effort and expense and you need a, a place to be able to do that. So just something to bear in mind. But nonetheless, if you plan on grow, having, let's say, two or more towers, it probably makes sense to uh, just buy a 3D printer and go ahead and make your own at this point. Um, now, some people are starting using rock wool. Some people are starting from jiffy pellets. Most of these are actually not started from either. They're started from uh, foam. So in my other hydroponic units, all of the seeds are either started from foam or they're started as cuttings. So what I've done in that case is I've taken the original foam block where I've taken the cutting, which maybe had nothing at all, um, and I've just transplanted them into here, and I've added a bit of rock wool around the edge. For example, you can see here, um, this is actually rock wool, but underneath of it is foam. So there's foam, there's rock wool, uh, just to act as a support and keep them from falling out. Um, you can use the hydrotone pebbles, but uh, especially with the hanging unit, you know, when you're trying to get these in or adjust some pieces, they all fit really tight, and you're going to kind of shake it, and the hydrotone uh, pebbles are going to fall out everywhere. So I found that rock wool is a bit more uh, forgiving in that respect. Um, the other thing is that rock wool holds a bit more moisture, so if for whatever reason the pump stops working, your plants aren't going to die as quickly. So just a little quick discussion about the economics. Of course, it will depend um, for each person on your own individual situation. So if you have a cheap electricity versus expensive electricity, if you have cheap filament versus expensive filament, and so forth. But I think it's pretty much a given that if you're going to have at least two units, then you will be better off buying a 3D printer and printing your own. Um, you don't have to get the most expensive 3D printer in the world to do this, because quite honestly, the quality is not that important. Um, like, you can see the layer lines on this pretty readily, and I've not even attempted to correct that because, quite frankly, it doesn't matter, and so therefore I don't care. Um, so, just something to keep in mind and consider. These plants have been in here about two weeks now. Um, the only issue I've had is that occasionally um, the water has stopped flowing. In order to adjust that, I found that if I make this tube go up higher, it actually works better. If it's curved near the bottom, then it causes issues. Um, other than that, I've had no issues whatsoever. I do have a proper water pump on order, and I will be building some better lights for this. For now, I have a combination of this grow lamp and some aquarium lamps that are being used, but I don't think that it really um, gives the proper lighting. So once I have uh, created the lights that I plan to build, then I will have another video to show that to everyone. So thank you and have a nice day.